recently I found out about a new bit of mathematics called geometric algebra, new to me. And this really changed the way I think about physics and mathematics at the moment. And I would really like to, to share that, which is a type of mathematics which allows you to uh, do rotations, translations and reflections and all kinds of geometric operations in a very new way by def defining clever number systems, which then do all the bookkeeping for you, which allows me to be more lazy, right? Because then I can focus on the things that actually matter, but I don't have to worry about all the bookkeeping involved. And this is actually kind of similar to negative numbers, where with negative numbers, we can keep track of things like that so that I don't have to write in my table two different columns for what I owe and what's, what's owed, because negative numbers allow you to do all of that in, in one go. And so these new number systems that we can find will allow us to uh, keep track of things like translations and rotations. So that's really cool stuff because in physics, we need those things all the time. And what's even more exciting, I think, is that it's relatively simple to discover these new number systems. I just have to consider one equation, which is x squared plus 1 equals 0. And thus, x squared is equal to minus 1. Now, when you think about it, right, there's no real number that squares to a negative number. Because if I would start with uh, plus or minus 1, I would just get when I square it, plus one. So that's a bit paradoxical. How do I get x to square to negative one? And the way I'm going to solve this is going a step back, actually, to how the ancient Greeks or Persians would have approached this problem, which is by drawing squares, right? Because quadratic equations uh, are all about uh, squares and areas. So what I will do now is I will draw a square to represent each of these terms. For example, the term x squared I will represent it with a square, which should have an area of minus 1. The term plus 1, I will represent it with a square with an area of plus 1. The 0 will be represented by a square with area 0. And this is the way the ancient Greeks would have done it, right? Because to them, quadratic equations were about areas. The question now is, this minus 1 here, what should the sides of this square be such that the area is negative 1? And like I just said, there is no real number that will allow us to do that, right? But we could define a number, i, such that i square is equal to minus 1. And then I can say that the sides of this square are i. For the other two squares, the one of plus 1 and 0, we can already solve those using real numbers, right? So there's nothing left to do. And we could be uh, satisfied at this point, which is what people traditionally are. So this is the introduction of, of something called uh, complex numbers. You might have heard about them. So and we could be happy at this point and say, in order to solve this one, we ha I have to introduce this new number i. For the square with a surface of 1 and the one with a surface of 0, I can just use real numbers for the sides, right? Because here I can say that this side is 1 and 1, and this side is 0 and 0, and then it works. Actually, now that I've opened this Pandora's box, I have to be a bit more careful, right? Because all this equation is saying that, is that the squares should be negative 1, 1, and 0. It doesn't say that the sides have to be real numbers. And this i proves it, that we can introduce these new numbers. So we can play the same game, actually, for the square of 1. The fact that the square should be plus 1 doesn't mean that the sides have to be plus 1. What I can do is introduce a new number, j, such that j square is equal to plus 1. And then if I say that the sides of this square are j, we find that the equation has been satisfied, right? What I find even more interesting is this one, which has a surface of zero, but that doesn't mean that the sides have to be zero. I can also introduce a new number called epsilon, such that epsilon square is zero. And then if I take these sides to be epsilon, it also works. So now by considering this one simple equation, x squared plus one equals zero, I have found three new number systems. 
and they all have their own uh, meaning. So these imaginary numbers, as we shall see later, is, uh, are the imaginary numbers and they're linked to rotations. These J are sometimes called the hyperbolic numbers and they are related to hyperbolic rotations. And these epsilon are called the dual numbers and they are related to translations. So all of them are not real numbers, but they all square to real numbers. And together they are often called the geometric numbers. And they will be the core of what we will do in this uh, series. So we now know that i times i will give negative one and j times j will give plus one. But what happens when I take an i times a j? And uh, this will be the topic of the next video. What happens when we start multiplying these things together? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time for that in this video. So I hope you will join me for the next video. Please consider subscribing to this channel and thank you very much for watching.